and yeah just you know sort of gaining food um should be done in a dignified manner and it should be somebody's choice as to where they get the food and what kind of food that they get um and they should also be made to feel um like they have some kind of power over where and what they eat yeah um so i found myself in a position of um food poverty a couple of years ago um and you know worried about where food was going to be coming from and money um and just sort of going along to the food bank just that stigma attached to it um feeling sort of ashamed that you've come to this point um and then again um during 2020 covid with the food from the the free school meal um things which i was initially excited about because they were sort of you know we've got got this food parcels for you and i thought how amazing that they're doing this fantastic and when i went to pick up the food i was a bit disappointed and um, mainly because it was just a poor amount of food and also because it i wasn't consulted as to what kinds of foods my children would eat and my daughter has sensory food issues so it was useless some of it and then it had to some of it had to go to waste unfortunately so that was a, a bit of a negative but the food vouchers were a, a definite help over that just like we've not been thought about you know we've not been asked or consulted um and that we were just and not not a person we were just a number or a statistic i think having any having control over kind of all parts of your life is important um, and especially when it comes to food and providing for your family um you know if you if you have money you have control you can go and spend that money on whatever type of food um and whatever type of food experience that you want to have when you haven't got money you, you haven't got that option and you're almost forced into um certain places and certain types of food and certain scenarios um yeah um during the um food experiences panel um with you guys um that was a positive experience because i know that what we were all saying and a lot of it was the same thing was going to be going into something that might um, influence it to be changed um you know just just having knowing that what you are saying isn't just um you moaning and complaining you're trying to change things because you know you you feel a certain way about something pretty sure that somebody is feeling similar or has the same concerns about it it'd be crucial really because i feel like um i don't think it's always the people in power's fault i think that they they just don't know and they can't change some things they don't know but if they listened to the people who do know then maybe they'd have a better grasp on it and that would probably enable them to change things better because the more knowledge they have the, the bigger impact they could make i think the way we produce food um, and the way that um there is a huge amount of food produced and it's not getting to everyone who needs it so we're overproducing um it's ending up getting wasted but yet there are still people who are not getting enough food there's just something wrong with that system it doesn't make any sense if we're producing if we're wasting sorry a third of all food that's produced on this planet then why is anybody going hungry in, <clears throat> in my opinion so i think there's a problem with the system the food production system I mean, the main the main issue with New Tree is that it is viewed as this um, beautiful, thriving seaside resort, and it is on the surface. Um, but there's also a lot of poverty and hardship, and a lot of it boils down to the cost of everything, mainly housing and the lack of housing, um, and things like um, your housing costs and your and your bills and things don't really change, but your food, your food money of disposable food income um, fluctuates um, regarding how much you've got spare so if you've paid all your bills then your food budget is the one thing that 
will be cut accordingly. Um, and that's a big problem in the UK because the wages are so low and the work's seasonal. A lot of the time it's zero on contracts um, and people struggle and there's, it, it's a fluctuating income, but it's not a fluctuating price on, on your bills. Um, and, you know, just, just, so people, just for people to see that it's not all sunshine and beaches, there's a lot else that goes on under the surface. Communities. I think um, the way, especially the way during COVID, how the communities pulled together um, when the government was silent, really. The government, the, the community sprung up and they bridged that gap a lot quicker than the government were able to. And I think if you let communities do that a bit more often, then they would find solutions to their own problems um, faster than a top-down approach would. Um, fabulous. Um, I mean, it changed my outlook on a lot of things and um, I met a lot of brilliant people I did a lot of great training with them um, and yeah everybody who goes there will tell you the same thing that it's a fabulous place and I was lucky to get involved and they're still close to my heart I mean it, it just you know it's, it's clear that the churches are the mainly ones who run the, the food bank and the ones who seem to be the one plugging the, the gap in a lot of cases so I think the whole um, church, religion, um, you know, health is sort of, what am I trying to say? Um, I, think, I think the church and the community is, is the gap. The churches tend to be the initial um, community response, I guess, the initial community response. Um, and they're fundamental to bridging that gap with their communities. And I think with a bit more support, um, they could thrive and continue to do that. For me, it would just be to feel like um, everybody has had a fair say in everything that happens in society, um, rather than just some, you know, politicians making the decisions for everybody. Um, more inclusive. Um, collaborative um, solutions to problems and you know more learning from sort of what other successful companies or initiatives or community projects have done and taking those learnings and applying them to other settings. And during Covid um, when sort of nobody knew what was going on exactly um, straight away Facebook pages like sprung up in my community and thousands and thousands of people joined them immediately and they were posting things like you know meals going spare does anybody need um, me to get medication um, you know need me to go and walk your dog anything anything like that and then putting notes through people's doors and saying you know I'm going shopping if you want any shopping get in leave a list outside um, and money or in an envelope or whatever and I'll drop it off for you. Just anything, and, and, and it was a response that a government couldn't have implemented. It was it was implemented by the people in the communities who saw the need and saw what their people needed. It's, it's dignified because it's the people who know what their communities need and what their, their colleagues and friends and family are going through. Um, it gives agency because they've got choice as to what they say yes to or no to or what they can ask for and yeah it gives power back to people rather than sort of waiting for a government or a local authority even to just tell them what to do i mean there is a, a level of support that you know communities need uh, i guess financially and um just to keep these sort of mini projects afloat but it, there's a definite need for community responses and community-led responses in a crisis situation um, to be, um, you know, pushed and, and encouraged. Um, you know, just because they often are on the front line and they've usually responded already, but can't always keep the organisations that they've, they've got going without the correct funding and, and, you know, partnerships and things like that, yeah.